Every time I go to record a video, there's like more and more stuff missing from this background, and it's kind of weird for me. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thrabe and you here for another Legacy video. Today's video is supported by Nicholas S, who gave me a dealer's choice donation deck list. And every time that happens, I'm up to no good, and we're playing Metallic Mimic on Warrior today as a thing that we're going to be doing in Legacy. Bor de Soledad is one of my favorite deck builders in Legacy. They have had some fantastic things that we've showcased on this channel, all sorts of nonsense throughout the years. And today we are essentially going to be playing a warrior-themed deck list with Cavern on Warrior being the primary plan. And some of these warriors maybe are going to look a little bit questionable, while others of these warriors recently trophied in my hands, and we'll see how this ends up going. So I think I want to start with CEDH staple Najila the Blade Blossom. Whenever a warrior attacks, you may have its controller create a 1-1 white warrior creature token that's tapped and attacking. And I want to go to the specific wording here. This is whenever a warrior attacks. Okay. So this thing creates warriors. The warriors are going to create more warriors, which are in turn going to create more warriors. You see where this is going? And Metallic Mimic is going to be a lord that will go and create warriors. And conveniently, there are a pretty good number of strong warriors within Legacy. And wouldn't you know it, Initiative Creature Seasoned Dungeoneer also fits the bill. So our goal is to kind of go wild by creating a whole bunch of creatures and spiraling the game out of control, either with Najila going wide or with Winota going and hitting Seasoned Dungeoneers and starting that whole initiative game. So Winota can hit Najila, the Kargan Intimidator, or the Seasoned Dungeoneer. Lylia is a spirit warrior, and Goblin Rabblemaster is a goblin warrior, so it's not like you're going to hit everything, but you've got pretty decent hits. So this is sort of an alternative take on the Winota slash red-white initiative deck that is more creature-type oriented. The, this deck is a warrior deck, whereas the deck that I played previously was a Winota deck if that makes sense. This one doesn't go quite as hard. It doesn't have Caves of Chaos Adventure, so we're not all in on Winota. The idea here is that Najila and Winota kind of split the work between them. As far as the sideboard goes, it kind of knows what it's looking to answer. We have some nice anti-combo cards that are playable on turn one. Um, I think this is a little sus because you don't actually have that many true white sources because a bunch of your white sources are actually cavernous souls, but I'm going to play the deck list as it did 5-0 and just kind of see how it feels. Other than that, we have some additional removal spells, some nice hating blood moon effects on a creature, which notably is, uh, you know, a thing I can hit off Winota. And let me tell you, instant speed Magus of the Moon that you can't respond to is... Well, some shit. And then we have some blasts rounding out the board. All right, no more nonsense. Let's hop into the matches here. If you're new here and you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you're a regular, throw me a like before this video begins. It's the easiest way to support my content for free. Let's battle. All right. Turn one Chalice, turn two Najila, turn three Metallic Mimic is fine with me. Feels like a legacy hand. A weird one. And one with the maybe too too many Kargan Intimidators, but we'll see how this card ends up performing throughout the league. So the big way that I lose this one is by this Ancient Tomb getting Wastelanded. We're probably playing against Delver. It's possible it is just a show-and-tell deck instead, and then things are a little bit spicier. Bloodstained Mire... Rixus control is now possible? Warrior. Do I want a Lilia here instead? I might want a Lilia here instead. And just get 
a card that can spiral going faster. Possible this just eats an edict. All right, cool, cool, cool. Sea of Traders, I don't need that this turn. All right, so next turn I can play Najila with Metallic Mimic happening the following turn. There's another Volk. Rest down is fine. Jess Guy? No, it wouldn't be Jess Guy control with Bloodstained Mire. Ah, uh, okay, sure. Okay. That's a little annoying. I kind of thought we had that axis covered. I'm just losing to that. Got to kill a Dreadnought in game one. I don't have white removal. I cannot. I can't top deck Winota next turn and get there. No, I, th I think that Phyrexian Dreadnought sneaking into play like that just beats me. I can't realistically do 16 next turn. Fortunate. Say Levy. Pyroblast is reasonable. Magus of the Moon is reasonable. It's weird to play Pyroblast and Chalice alongside each other, so I'm going to have to think about that. I think the Intimidators are going out as my, air quotes, weakest warrior. Or Magus of the Moon. I might not want Pyroblast when I'm on the play. I might want it when I'm on the draw. Keep one more Intimidator just as an attacker for Najila. I'm keeping this hand. I have to figure out what I'm doing with it. It's probably just turn one Rabble Master, turn two uncounterable Winota, and attempt to spiral the game in that capacity. But I could play slower and play everything with Cavern. I don't think that's correct. Let's Gromox, Rant, Lilia, City, Rabble, and I'll get in there for one. Okay. This is good stuff. If my opponent has a bolt for the Rabble Master. They do. I'm still going to get a Winota trigger. Which matters. And it matters a lot. Cavern goes on Warrior. Red, white. And we'll see how good our Winota hits are. Trigger. Uh, Seasoned Dungeoneer is fine. I will take the initiative. Okay. Effective turn to win. Sounds good. On the draw, do I want Pyroblast? It's awkward because it's hard for me to hold up this mana, but it's something that answers the trust down. Mimic slow here. I could go like one, two, three, play three Pyroblasts. I'm okay with that, but not in love with it because like there's going to be some like weird cavernous old Pyroblast hands. This is turn two uncounterable Magus of the Moon. I think I keep that. All right, we're chilling. And a second Pyroblast as well. Not bad. I think I just blast that. I think I aggressively blast that. I just find a basic. Since I have two of these, it's really hard for me to use them at appropriate times. Like, to use both of them at appropriate times on critical spells. God, this is so good. All right, I will put this on human. And spirit guide. This is uncounterable and will blow up my opponent's Urza Saga. Which is clutch. The elemental blast is good. Oddly specific answer to that problem. For sure, sure. That is a shuffle. And a new ponder. I'm hoping to spike any land here. No shuffle on that one. Not hit it. Let's go ahead and cast a Mimic. And if I hit any, any land, I get to start spiraling. This does mean that if in my opponent's five cards, they have Dress Down plus Dreadnought plus land, that they can create a thing this turn. I think I just have to ignore that and play to my own board here. New Urza Saga, sure. Need any land. That is a land. I believe it, it is correct to Najila here, because Najila can be uncounterable. Najila is very good with Metallic Mimic. Wow, another blue elemental blast. That is a little surprising. Saga ticks up. Okay. This is just gonna be a Snapcaster Mage into a Ponder. To a brainstorm, sure. 
pyroblast kind of of medium quality here. All right. Second brainstorm. Very aggressive. My turn's really awkward. Basically, no matter what. Because my ideal draw, ignoring what my what my opponent could have, is Season Dungeoneer attack. Because that's the uncounterable one that doesn't interact with Force at Will. But I probably need to hold up Pyroblast. I think I play Lilia. Which is counterable. Uh, yep. That's fine. I let that go. And I don't attack here. Just leave this body back. Yep. Get your construct. Well, Guide Lantern is fine. Yep. I just had to play around dress, dress down into Dreadnought because I can't otherwise beat it. Yep. Fuck me. It was a very brutal sequence of cards, and I'm super punished for not just kind of going for it. All right. Alice of the Void is too slow to matter here. I just have to drop this and kind of have to hope to hit another reasonable card here. Because what I have is not... Oh, I don't know that that was correct. I think you're supposed to try to outsize my creatures. All right. So I can forge or I can lost well. I think I'm going left. I think this game is flipping and I need to try to end it. Uh, that's very good. That is uncounterable. And I can play a Chalice first. Let's attempt the Chalice on one. Attempt Najila. Combat. Back. Targets my Season Dungeoneer. Najila gives me a creature. Um, my opponent is losing this Urza Saga anyway. I think I bin that. They have double blue already. Uh... Okay, sure. They are going to make a 12-12, which is not actually going to race my Season Dungeoneer. Like, that's fine. And I can't do a second one. Wow. Uh, I still think that's fine. Yeah, I just win the crap there. Uh, that didn't necessarily feel great, but we got there. Okay, this is a very fair hand that I think just goes back. This is turn two, this is turn three. Like, it's relatively aggro. I feel like this deck just wants to do better. I'm, I'm going to ship this and try to fish. Hoo-hoo. What's my chance of hitting a red source? 18 hits, two draws. I... Am I in love? No. Am I keeping it? I think I think so. I don't know that I really want to play from five. Um, this is a rough matchup to be paired against having kept this hand because Day's Force of Will and Lightning Bolt all solve these problems. Lilia a play. Lilia is a play. I think that means that I YOLO on Lilia instead of the Goblin Rabble Master that I was planning on. Because, fuck, there's some chance that I attack and hit a Chrome Mox this turn. Alright. We probably lost game one. I, it's, it's not technically over, but I expect that, like, Cantrip into Wasteland or me missing this next land drop just kind of does me in. I'm at 17. Yuck. Okay. I'll, I'll wait another turn or two, but I'll be competing relatively quickly here. Like, we... Kept a risky hand that had good payoff because Rabble Master into Najila is an incredibly swift clock. But we did not hit the payoff. Well, more accurately, our opponent had interaction. I think we can miss the land drop once without it being a big deal. Um, with that Tarmogoyf in the graveyard, I now know that we are playing against Rug Delver specifically. Um, yeah, okay. Now these turn into 3-3s. Three and the pain is here. I imagine that with double Ancient Tomb in play, I can't win from here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I am dead on board. My opponent goldfishes me on their turn three. All right. So, yeah, there is literally no... Well, is there any perfect top deck that can result in 19 damage next turn? Maybe. Actually. Did he? 
from Mox. Oh, shit. Um, I was doing math involving having an extra goblin token, which I'm about to lose to this blocking. I don't. Sorry, I, I don't think that does that with this blocker. Okay. Um, I have a handful of cards that I can think about, and I just have to figure out how I want to approach this. I'm very much not sure what's correct. Because my opponent is playing Tarmogoyfs, which means Fury doesn't kill everything. And my opponent is probably playing three Marktide Regents if they're playing Tarmogoyf. Um, that's kind of what was in the weekend results. The Pyroblast doesn't hit all of their non Dragon Rage Channeler threats. Magus of the Moon is sick off of Winota, but if I get to the point where I have resolving Winota triggers, I'm probably just good. Anyway, I can ley line, but then there's my graveyard to grow Tarmogoyfs anyway. So basically, I am very unsure what I want to do. It may be on the play that I just say fuck it and run back the main deck again, and when I'm on the draw, I become more reactive. I legit do not know. I think I'm going to run back the main when I am on the play. Turn two this, turn three this is very underwhelming here. I'm going to to do better. I think this qualifies as better. Throw Chromox back with his hand, though. I'm keeping six of these rather than going deeper. Um, but this is just awkward. Like, the single red card hand is super weird. And kind of the hope is uh, <laughs> that this resolves. And then I can just play a Lilia that doesn't get killed by Lightning Bolt. All right. There's a Delver. Sure. I need my opponent not to have Lightning Bolt. I could do a weird Metallic Mimic turn, but I don't think I'm about that. All right, this is on Warrior. I think it's better to just try and dodge Lightning Bolt for a single turn. All right. Than it is to take a turn off to play Metallic Mimic. Delver flips to Brainstorm. All right. Gotta dodge Bolt. My opponent has so many looks at it here. Uh, Wasteland is fine. Wasteland is absolutely fine here. Do I Ancient Tomb this or City of Traitors this? I think I Ancient Tomb this, but it's interesting. I think I Ancient Tomb this. It's a raw clock question. Alright. Warrior. I guess I could have done this post-combat. Oh, this is all fine. Now I have something that's outside of Lightning Bolt range. This is fine. Metallic Mimic, not doing a ton right now. Okay. Red mana is now available. My opponent is on a two-turn clock, and I am on a four-turn clock. I'm currently on the right side of this. Hydroblast-type cards can happen, though. Okay, sure. Yep, yep, yep. Lightning Bolt the Mimic is fine. All right, my opponent goes to six. I think I just make a land drop and pass. I don't think I play the spirit guide for two life. My opponent's already on chump block duty next turn. I guess they're looking to draw like a Tarmogoy for a Merktide Regent that can stop this thing. Okay, two card types in graveyard. That's fine. Although I'm not 100% sure that that's the correct land to go after. Because like the Ancient Tomb points of life loss are very real right now. In Noda, that's cool, although probably fully unnecessary. A wing, Alice of the Void is cool. All right, opponent is in jump block mode. I think I do go ahead and a the one point of life. The difference between eight and nine is marginal here. And attempt Chalice of the Void. Okay, good enough. So now it's the game where I'm on the draw, which is harder. I think I want Furies. I think I just need to answer opposing early creatures. I think I'm getting rid of Mimics first here. Like, the Mimics have really cool synergy with Najila and Goblin Robomaster. But I think I just want to keep a high density of red cards so that I can pitch and kill Delvers and Dragon Rage Channelers early. And then it's like Leyline, Pyroblast, Magus are all playable. What do I want to do to fill the slots? And is the Intimidator worth it? As a 
somewhat four power attacker. Winota might be win more here. Goes under Chrome Mox really well though. I think I'm gonna keep Winota as something that dodges Lightning Bolt and try to become a little more controlling. It's gonna be awkward when I just draw a ley line on like turn four and lose the game because of it. Um, now that I know the matchup, I know that I'm not willing to keep a hand that looks like this. This is fine. Hand pitches Pyroblast. I just can't cast it. Uh, so this is fully a hand of do I get wastelanded on turn one? I get wastelanded, or sorry, after my turn one. If I do, I'm dead. If I don't, I win. Probably. Goes on human here. I don't want to commit the City of Traitors to the board. This is such a clear sign of, like, Wasteland Me if you have it. Uh, which fucking sucks. Yep. That jam Seasoned Dungeoneer this turn. Into Days and Force of Will, though. Is that fine? Not really fine. I don't know that things are getting better, though. I think I've got to go for it. Or, sorry, this doesn't jam into, uh, Days... I have double spirit guide. All right. There's a brainstorm. These just days. Oh shit, we resolved. Hot damn. With red white under here, it doesn't matter too much what I get. Uh, I'm going to get red so that in theory I can hard, ca hard cast a fury. I never need white white. Okay, cool. All right. That is a Tarmogoyf, which is currently a 1-2. I believe that I can be the beatdown that I want to see in the world. Oh shit, Rabble Master. That's pretty cool. I don't really need to play that pre-combat. The token just dies to Tarmogoyf and does no real good. Go ahead and play that post-combat. One, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that can go on top. All right, my opponent goes to 13. Actually, do I want to play a spirit guide here? There's basically no way that this leaves play. A oh, brazen borrower. I just always take initiative back next turn anyway. Play a rabble master. That's played around days. All right. Tarmogoyf is going to stay pretty small. Okay, there is lightning bolt. My opponent can take the initiative. But I don't really think that's a problem. All right, they do have a basic. Okay, so I believe the way that I want to do this is just to go ahead and attack in and take the initiative in combat. That can go to graveyard. Put my opponent to seven. Take the initiative back. Wrap them. Put them to one. No fetch lands get to happen. And then I think I play Season Dungeoneer around days. And go ahead and make this land drop. That's four. <laughs> yeah, okay. GG's. So this is a weird hand. I can turn one Metallic Mimic, turn two Uncounterable Goblin Rabble Master, and never use these Chrome Moxen, but create something that goldfishes incredibly quickly? I think I keep that. It's like this is an incredible five card hand. Goblin, sure. Well, this could get a little weird. Now think I Ancient Tomb rather than City of Traitors. And I'll kind of have something to think about. These are Goblin Warriors, right? Just 100% checking myself. No, oh, they are Goblins. Alright, I guess I named Goblin with this. I don't know what I do if my opponent attacks. Fuck! Um, that's still fine. We trade if they attack. They did not attack. Alright. This goes on Warrior. And I think I start here. Without doing any math, I bet this kills next turn. Alright. I send him. I have to attack with this. It is a Goblin. My opponent's at 16. And I will attempt to do disgusting things next turn. A Fury, if my opponent has them in the main deck, would be scary. Um, outside of that, I'm maybe okay. Ooh, Munitions Expert. I am not okay. Alright, so Goblin Lackey gets to get in. Which... 
could be okay, or could be I'm effectively dead if it's Muxus. It is Kiki Jiki. Kiki Jiki munitions expert is brutal. Opponent, I like I play Najila. My opponent just taps Kiki, kills it. They tap Kiki, kill another thing on my turn, on their turn. I'm basically permanently in check here. And I don't really have game one removal. Uh, I think I have to concede there. Uh, that's unfortunate. Fury's in. Probably Chalice is out. I can think about Chalice on the play for Goblin Lackey and the Mana Dork specifically, but they are a Cavern of Souls deck, and that's a thing that matters. I think I'll keep Chalice when I'm on the play. Just trim some number of these. I think I go with the colorless card here. This doesn't have more than one toughness, does it? No. I think I'll trim the colorless card since I'm bringing in Fury, and it's kind of a vital portion of my game. I'm keeping this. And then I have to decide whether or not I just want to ignore Chalice of the Void and just Chromox, Winota, Rival Master into Najila and try to kill my opponent. I believe that is my plan. Uh, which is weird, because Chalice is theoretically something that I do want to be doing. But this is an incredibly fast goldfish, and I think I ignore my prison elements here to just get my opponent dead. All right. What do you got? It is a lackey. My Chalice would have done good. We'll see if this does better. I attack. I will put my Goblin Rival Master trigger on bottom. And again, without doing math, it seems like my opponent is dead next turn. All right, opponent's at 12. Again, there are cards like Fury and Pyrokinesis that can do gross things. Food chain, sure. Two red mana. Or Snoop. Three red mana. Or Matron. Or a Squee. Okay. You can cast Squee from Exile, so that gives my opponent infinite mana. Alright, after a couple of Squee iterations, that's a new Goblin Matron. Or a Sling Gang. That provides a lot of bodies. So my opponent has sacrificed a Squee to a Sling Gang. Uh, am I deterministically just dead to this already? My opponent has infinite mana, they keep recasting Squee. They sacrifice Squee. Yes, I am deterministically dead to that. Okay. I I get the picture. I will concede. I had a turn 3 kill, my opponent had a turn 2 kill. I don't think I'm supposed to play around that ridiculous sequence of cards, because they had to have exactly Ancient Tomb, and Food Chain, and 2-drop, and either Goblin Matron or Squee. That's a pretty absurd sequence of things to happen, but GG's. Before our next round here, a quick shout out to Patrick, Booster Therapy, Michael V, Yan G, Josh S, and Dominic C for supporting my content. Thanks a lot, folks. It lets me do what I do. And if you are interested in supporting me, please consider doing so via a donation deck list or subscribing on YouTube or Patreon. Back to the magic. Okay. Um, I don't think this hand is quite there. It's a double chrome box hand with not enough stuff to put under it. I'm going to go ahead and do a little fishing here. This hand is good. Hard to play, but it's good. I think Lilia is the card that goes back here. And I'll talk about what I'm going to do after my first draw step. Because there's a lot of ways to play this. We'll be choosing the one that gets my opponent dead the fastest. Fuck. Alright, my opponent just has the turn one kill. Um, actually possible that I beat this. Do I want to concede now, though? I think once I lose either one of these cards and my opponent realizes that I'm an aggro deck, I can't realistically win anymore. I think I just concede here and hide the information. Three ley lines in... Deafening Silence is okay. Magus of the Moon technically does stuff, but I probably don't want it. So I just I just want to goldfish my opponent as quickly as possible. Like I just want to reduce their life total to zero. And I have to think about Deafening Silence. I think I want it. Again, it's a little awkward to cast. I think I'm going three of the two drops out. 
I'm going to go Intimidator out. Deafening Silence in. Mimic is easier to play if I have to Chrome Mox a Deafening Silence in some scenario. Uh, turn 1, Deafening Silence. Turn 2, start making idiots. This is fine. Actually, this is a little better than I thought. I play Deafening Silence and then Spirit Guide, Spirit Guide, Metallic Mimic. Fuck! Or that last part of what I just said. Chancellor is annoying. It makes me lose the Spirit Guide here. Cast Deafening Silence. And pay. Now, there is no full guarantee that this stops my opponent from producing a creature on turn two. They can just do something like Faithless Looting into card. But this stops the rituals from being good and the artifact mana from doing stuff. That is a grief. I lose Najila and gets a lot worse. Uh, notably, Feed the Swarm was pitched to grief. Alright, Najila's gone. My opponent reanimates grief. That's reasonable. Although, honestly, reanimating my Najila might be better than reanimating their grief. Alice of the Void. I'm in. I think I cast it on one so that I can keep Spirit Guide. I have some two drop creatures that I can draw. Two drop would shut off more outs to things like Deafening Silence, like it would shut off Serenity, for example. Keeping the Spirit Guide lets me play a four drop if I draw one. I don't do that. Now that I can play a four drop, I just cast this as a sad creature that attacks for two. Basically never going to kill my opponent because at any point they can just hold back grief and block, but sometimes you do what you gotta do. I will take three. I cannot block this. I'm at 14. And opponent's got something else. Something else for three mana. Uh, Alright, well, GG. Oh, no, not GG. Not playing this around counterspell, I don't think. Oh, my opponent said misclick. Okay, that makes more sense. Let's crash in for a little bit of damage. It's it's five. It's relevant amounts of damage. But assuming that my opponent actually has show and tell to put something like this or worse into play, they are just going to beat me. I'm down to 11. Oh, no. Okay. Might have misclicked uh, which land they wanted to fetch. They might have wanted a bad lens for one of those. Oh, Seasoned Dungeoneer, you say. Alright, my opponent goes to 2. I am in for this. Let's do this. In Warrior. 4 mana for Uncounterable Seasoned Dungeoneer, which means that I should win through just about any blocker next turn. Pull a mountain out of the deck. I've already made my land drop. Call it a turn. What is this? Echoing Truth on Chalice. Now, oh, okay, no Entomb, or well, I guess that's relevant. Okay, we get to go to another game. Do I want Pyroblast? Deafening Silence on the draw is also not great, because my opponent can do all of their multi-spell things on turn one, or alternatively, end of turn, Entomb, make a thing. Like, it can stop some of the worst things, but... I don't know that Deafening Silence is going to be worth it on the draw. I only have three Ley Lines, too. Doesn't help me. I think I'm going to cut these for these. This will help me protect my Ley Line if I do get one or counter a Show and Tell. It's something red that goes under the Mox, which is not irrelevant. Just turn one Mimic, turn two Najila. It's a very fast kill, but my opponent kept their 7, so I think I need to fish harder. This is a much better hand because it has a ley line. I think my plan is Rabble into Winota in a vacuum, but I think I'm likely to lose one of these two cards to a piece of discard, so I think I'm actually going to pitch the Winota, despite the fact that that gives me the easiest goldfish. Alright, I've got a ley line. You've got a Chancellor. I have some pretty good draws here. Generically speaking, I have to be worried about my opponent discarding me and then reanimating one of my cards before I can put something in that blocks it effectively. 
Ooh. Go fast. I think I imprint Najila and play Goblin Rebel Master. Oh shit, uh, Chancellor. Makes this more complicated. I'm gonna plateau and pass. Alright. Oh shit, it's wear tear. Alright. On its Chancellor was like annoyingly good. Unmask targeting themselves. They're going for a Chancellor, which would they will then reanimate. Okay. Understood. So the first thing that I play has a tax of two. Is unfortunate. Everything else has a tax of one. So I'll go ahead and cast a Chromox. Paying for both triggers. Now I have a very real choice. It's gonna seem weird. I think I'm supposed to imprint this. It's my most expensive card. And Right now I'm on a four turn clock. My opponent taking the initiative and forging up their Chancellor could be very awkward for me. So I am just going to go ahead and ignore that. And I have some very powerful draws, such as Winota, that can make these cards spiral harder. I think I just play this land this turn. In the deck one more time, the point of life should not be relevant here. Play a Rabble Master. Yes, my opponent a love tap for one. They are at 11. I know my opponent has two Faithless Lootings that are not currently castable. That bodes well for me. The awkward thing here is that at some point my opponent can just pump the brakes and turn Chancellor of the Annex into a blocker. All right, and they are going to do that immediately. Ooh, I still get one point of damage if I just attack with the two tokens this turn. Chancellor tax is preventing me from double spelling. I think I will go ahead and just cast the chalice this turn. Not sure about that, but it seems like shutting off in tomb is pretty legit. And again, this is still worth one point of damage. I am gaining ground despite losing a creature in combat here. There's no creatures in Graveyard for my opponent to go and just top deck and animate dead or something. So that's nice. Okay. Feed the Swarm. Uh, that's still a Lightning Bolt worth of damage to them for that. That is very much not free. I'll take that. Yep, yep, yep. We'll go ahead and play an Ajila. Pay the tax. Um, unfortunately, the goblin token is just a goblin. My opponent goes to five here. I think the top decks favor me at this point, but my opponent, I guess, can... Oh, no. Reanimating a goblin rabble master doesn't really do a lot. It does some stuff. Oh, that is an evoked grief. That, uh... That's not a feel-good. What was the pitched card there? Okay, a reanimation spell that was dead. Sure. Um, they don't have a good attack this turn. I'm chilling. My opponent has two dead cards. I have two dead cards. Again, I think this stalemate is favoring me. Because it's pretty easy. Yikes. For me just to create, like, draw one more card that allows me to make lethal. It just, it just takes one more body, pretty much anything. And I can do two turn attacks, losing two bodies, two Chancellor. All right. We're chilling. That'll do. I will play Season Dungeoneer. Hang the one. Have this enter. Grab a land out of my deck. Go to combat. Attack. Give Najila protection from creatures. I can go into my graveyard. Create a warrior, and then this has my opponent taking five unless they have something. They can block one, take four, five. All right, we have gotten the, the GGs there. Uh, that was very tight, and I think we got a little lucky. We had a few bad draws, but it was more important that my opponent had cards that were locked under Chalice. All right, are we up to three and one now? We're up to three and one. Okay. 
turn. The hand's a keep. That much is clear. It's just like whether or not I want to play everything off Cavern of Souls. I think in a vacuum, the correct play is Chrome Mox, Imprint, the Intimidator, play Najila on one into Uncounterable Season Dungeoneer on turn two. That is just my highest impact hand. And I think I am going to go that route. By Intimidator, Ancient Tomb, and Nj Najila. All right, Najila is in play. It's hard for me to both lose this and get wastelanded at the same time. And if my opponent wastelands me, they're very far behind. It's like this is a card that will singularly spiral on its own. Words? Prismatic ending. Sure. Second Ajila, not great there. Um, yep. I will use this ability. Go ahead and hit my opponent. My opponent has said hello. For all the uh, random salt pictures that do go around on Magic Online, I, I do have a very large number of people who give me positive interactions on MTGO, and that's worth shouting out. Okay, that is a Swords. So, do I want an Najila or do I want to Season Dungeoneer? Yeah, I just want to Season Dungeoneer. I should technically do this post-combat, but lazy. Alright, Season Dungeoneer. I will grab my basic plane since I've already played my Mountain. Crash in with a warrior, uh, which I guess is a reason not to do it post combat. One, two, three, four, five. This is not a great draw. I am just going to take it since it is a guaranteed body. I think I value that highly enough right now. I think I'm forging onto a warrior token rather than onto the seasoned dungeoneer. My opponent's under so much pressure. Initiative Forge plus Trap plus the, the Najila that they don't know is coming. Okay. I want them to fetch. They did not fetch. I will still Forge. Forge here. I have Terminus vibes right now. I'm not going to lie to you. It feels like I'm about to get Terminus. I'm not going to play another body. Despite the fact that it is insane to play a Najila. Alright, my opponent got a little value. Okay. Dress down is reasonable. This means my opponent only takes seven this turn. Go to five. Would I like to play another creature? My opponent's just deterministically dead to trap unless they can take the initiative. I think I'm good. Yeah. That's, uh... That's what we're here to do. And my opponent did not fuck around in terms of interaction either, and they still just died, right? That was ending swords as two pieces of early interaction and a dress down, which saved probably a point of damage. Or if I would have played out Najila. So I guess my primary question is, was that a random dress down in a control deck, or is this another Stifle Knot deck? If this is a random control deck... I don't mind submitting as is. If this is a Stifle Knot deck with Urza Saga, I want Magus of the Moon. Power Blast is worth considering either way. I'm going to play a couple of these, I think, over Metallic Mimic. Like, assuming that I am just playing against a generic control deck, this attacks for three, sometimes attacks for four, and is sometimes unblockable. Plus, we haven't made enough cowards, can't block warrior jokes, and it's, like, round five, so we're running out of time to do that. My hand is a keep. I have some things to think about in terms of how to play and sequence it. Arrakis. This, uh... There's stuff going on here. I think I'm supposed to put a Cavern on Warrior and make all of my threats uncounterable. Playing turn one Chalice at the cost of shutting off my own Pyroblast some portion of the time. There's also worlds where my opponent just, like, taps some mana and eats this this turn with a prismatic ending and like that's fine yeah so this is okay with me Ooh, that's good warrior now what do i want to play this turn i think i want to play rabble master with pyroblast backup rather than just jam the seasoned dungeoneer immediately like the initiative is obviously insane and Jamming it early and often is a thing that I want to do. 
but Pyroblast stopping a Teferi or a removal spell or whatever this turn is pretty clutch. Like, it's my build your own force of will. I will not go after something like a Ponder. Oh, that's interesting. I think I'm rabbling. This is just uncounterable and buffs my onboard threat. Yep, that's fine. I still get another one. And get to attack in for two while holding up Pyroblast for a dress down if that's a thing that's going to happen. All right. We're chilling. Post combat chalice? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Lily is much worse with Caracas on board. I think post combat chalice is my most likely play. Another swords. Understood. I can now get in three points of damage with a Lilia. I think I'd rather just play the Chalice. Also possible that I'm being too cowardly with just damning, jamming Seasoned Dungeoneer. Okay, sure. Containment Priest. Got it. Doesn't get Pyroblasted. It is notoriously a card that's very good versus Winota. Right, my opponent takes one. I play Seasoned Dungeoneer and then lose the initiative. It's very awkward for me. I still think I want to do this now. This is just uncounterable, and then I get to search up a red source to hold up the Pyroblast. Drop the mountain and pass the turn, and then try to Pyroblast something relatively aggressively. Fuck, so many swords, naturally. That's still okay. Like, if we trade initiative back and forth, I think that's something that favors me. It's if my opponent can hold initiative that it's a true problem. This Pyroblast has just been terribly awkward as my opponent has only played white cards this game. Fucking Jeskai mono white deck over there. Thank you. I will not be letting you do that. Absolutely not. New Pyroblast. Which makes this Chalice awkward. I think I just want to play a creature while holding up Pyroblast. It's awkward though. I think this looks like this. Play the Intimidator. I don't like how I did this. This is punished by my opponent's final card being the last copy of Swords to Plowshares. Alright, crash in. Take initiative. Go to Forge. Forge up the Intimidator. I now have a 5-3 pseudo-unblockable body. And a chump blocker for initiative. Alright, cool. Wrap. Wrap my opponent down to nine. Target creature becomes a coward. You are a coward. Cannot block warriors. Unfortunately, this is just a goblin. Crash on in. No blocks. I'm going to give this plus one, plus one. Tapping this. It's a little awkward. Because that does technically drop Pyroblast if Chalice is removed. All right, we have gotten the GGs from my opponent, and we end up with a 4-1 for the league. All right, we got there. Um, I believe lifetime now in Legacy, my win rate with Winota decks is over 80%. Overall thoughts on the deck list? Um, honestly, pretty solid. The... Weakest part of the deck list is probably the two drop slots, but I don't necessarily know that I would cut either from the deck, like despite saying that. Metallic Mimic into either Rabble Master or Najila is an incredibly fast and aggressive start. We didn't have those starts go successfully. We tried a couple of times, but then interaction happened or our opponent raced us. The Intimidator is very interesting. In the last round there, we did get to see it do strong things, where it was forged up and then it was essentially attacking as a six-power unblockable trampler. Now, did that require a little extra mana investment? Yeah, but was that good? Also, yeah. Uh, I am not surprised that this deck list did 5-0. Um, I don't know that I would make any drastic changes to it before playing it again. I'm not sure if you want the fourth Chrome Mox 
it can make your starting hands better, but going down the cards like very much matters, and Chromox is a little bit worse when Metallic Mimic is a colorless thing that you have to think about. I do think for the purposes of playing Magic Online, I do want the fourth ley line of the Void. Um, I would feel like Deafening Silence is probably the worst card in this 75, and if I was going to change something, I'd probably go minus one Deafening Silence for plus one ley line of the Void, and I would consider playing other combo hate cards that don't require white pips because you don't have a ton of white pips and while i did manage to turn one the deafening silence the one time that i drew it against the animator i don't think that that is necessarily going to be something that is constant since so many of your white pips come from cavern of souls or are reliant on chrome Mox hitting one of these eight cards anyway folks i hope you enjoyed if you did please click the like button on the way out it helps out a lot i hope you have a great rest of the day See ya.